Amy. Joe, in relation to the enforced uh, replacement, uh, three of them, how close were, uh, obviously, Ronnie was wasn't considered, but how close was Ian Henderson and Ty Furlong to making? Um, Ian was definitely the closer of the two. Ian could probably play on Saturday, but he, he wasn't able to, to complete training today and we're not going to risk him. Um, it, it, I just don't think it's worth it with, uh, with what's coming up. And also, you don't want to put a, a player at risk of further injury. So uh, Ian was very close. I think he could definitely play next weekend and certainly the weekend after that, he, he will be fine. Um, Ty was close as well. Uh, we thought on Tuesday that Ty, he, he may well make it, but the progress just, just stalled a little bit. And so we just said, no, look, let's not chase this. Uh, let's focus on the opportunity for other people and get you right for, for Scotland in a couple of weeks' time. Those other people, uh, notably Andrew and Chris particularly, how do you think they will cope with it? this big occasion, this big opportunity for us. Look, um, you know, after, after just over three minutes last weekend, Andrew Porter had to come on to replace Tig and did a sterling job for, for you know, 76 and a half minutes. So he, he, he acquitted himself really well. I know it's not the same, the same level. Um, that Rob Evans is a, is a, is a tricky customer. Um, and, uh, you know, the angles and, and stepping around, uh, all those are going to be really good learning experiences for, for Andrew Porter. And they've got to learn somewhere, and this is, this is a really good opportunity for them. Just on the loss of three lines, so from your starting 15, how significant is that in, in your view? Wow, well, you know, <laughs> they're world class players. You don't suddenly uh, replace world class players, but we're a lot more focused on who we do have. And who we do have is, is Andrew Porter, who's a really promising young player that we're excited about. James Ryan, likewise. Chris Farrell, you know, I've been talking to Chris Farrell for three or four years, and he, he's been a, a, a project, a long-term project, and I thought, I thought he did really well against Argentina and, and only a second test. So, yeah, we're short on experience and we're up against the team that are welcoming back three lines while, while we see three disappear. So, y yes, that, that's not ideal, but at the same time, um, if you want to learn, what better environment than in what will be a, a really white-hot atmosphere in, in the Aviva on Saturday? Joel, how does it affect the rest of the pack when you have to replace someone in the front row, especially someone of Tig's experience? Well, I, I think you know Ken's probably a better place to answer that. But there's there's been there's been no let up and uh, and the real scrum focus and and uh, you know that that is exactly the same in the line out as well. Without Ian, uh, we, we uh, are ready to test the strength of our squad, and we're always ready to test the strength of our squad. And we we would like to think that can be as seamless as possible. So the, the, I think the forward pack. Uh, they, they still have just as much enthusiasm for, for what they need to roll their sleeves up and get ready for on Saturday. And when you put Andrew and Chris into a game like this, uh, obviously you're convinced they're ready, but is there always kind of a question mark until they actually play it, uh, the intensity of this game and in a game like this, or is it a case of you're convinced they're ready and that's that? I, I think there's always question marks. Um, you know, I know Rory Best with over 100 caps asks himself questions before he plays. Uh, you know, in a, in a documentary um, last year after uh, we managed to beat the All Blacks, uh, Andrew Trimble revealed that, you know, he questions himself on the, on the morning of every test match he plays after 60 test matches. So, you know, you're always questioning yourself because you know that your opponent is a very good player. You know that there are circumstances you don't control in the game and there are going to be scenarios that come up that, that you'd like to think you're prepared for, but you don't, you don't know how you're going to cope. So um, for a, a player who hasn't been there before, yeah, it, it's a bit more pressure. That, the unknown is always a fear for pretty much any human being. And there is a little bit about the, the unknown going into this weekend. Keen, if I can put that question about the pack to you and how it affects things, the changes, and how you see the challenge of this Wales pack this weekend. It's one of the kind of the main battlegrounds of this game, and I guess any other as well, to be fair. Um, I think if you look at it, 
Ports firstly, over the last year and a half, what he's had to take in his stride and change inside to the scrum and, and how he's developed that part of his game. It's uh, it's more exciting and nervous to see what he's going to provide. You know, he's he's a very talented player, a strong lad, and um, and he's pretty comfortable to scrum with. You know, you, you don't feel like there's there's any deficit. And then there's the freak show that is James Ryan. He just keeps producing, so um, you know it's exciting as well. And to have his energy in behind you in the scrum is, is brilliant. Now he'll be behind Ports, so uh, that's that's going to be a strong side. Joe. In the past, I suppose your your first uh, occasion playing Wales aside, you, you somewhat struggled to break the, the Welsh defence down. From what you've seen in the opening two rounds of this year's tournament, is there anything to suggest they're any weaker than they have been in the past? Can you imagine? Yeah, I, I I think they've all been one score games apart from last year where they got a charge down right at the end when we had <coughs> to play. But apart from that, you know, we went over the line and got the ball down, but were penalised. Uh, you know, legitimately because we joined them all in front of where the ball was at the time. So, you know, um, that's how fine the margins are. So I, I, I don't think it's it's too much different from any other game that we play. The way they're playing at the moment and the way Rob Howley has them with the width they're playing with, uh, Dan Bigger, you know, him coming in, 60-cap veteran, uh, w with uh, a real understanding of the game, I, I think we just have to be ready for whatever they throw at us. And I, I have no doubt that they're going to vary their game up. They drive a lot of lineouts, so we've got to be ready for that. They play the ball in the air a lot because they have good guys going after it. And they, they will also play with, with width. Um, so I, I think what we've got to do is, is make sure that we are ready for whatever they throw at us and, and that we don't give them too, ma too many access points to be able to play um, in whatever way they choose. Joe, taking the, taking the rep and the weather out of it, if Ireland, if Wales are made to make 250 tackles again, if the ball's in play for 46 minutes again, do you expect Ireland to win the game, like in comparison to last season? I, I, don't, I don't have an expectation other than the players are going to work hard, there is a, we have a plan, they, they, will, they will work hard to make sure that our defensive plan is put in, in place, the attacking plan is, is put in place, and then those fine margins will will determine the result. Um, as I said last year, e even you know, two years ago when they were here, I think we led 13-3, uh, and you know they, they they got a scrum platform that in the end Toby Falatau scored off that uh, that they kept that pressure on, and, and in the end it was a 16-all draw on the back of us having a number of players missing, and uh, it. History, if it does repeat itself, we're in a similar circumstance this time as well. We're, we're going to have to demonstrate that that there is a strength of squad and, and we're excited about getting the opportunity to do that. As far as those fine margins are concerned, as I mentioned last year, we hit the front with 15-9, we get the ball over the line, we kick that goal with 16-15 up. So I, I don't see that there's a huge amount wrong with the plan because at that stage we'd had the yellow card um, and that scored uh, when Johnny was off the pitch at one stage and then when the yellow card was there. So, <coughs> you know, we'd hope to have the discipline not to allow them that. Those are the fine <coughs> margins. I, I don't think if you looked at the difference between the way the two teams played, that there was a heck of a lot between the two teams. And, th and that's why people get really excited about this game. They know that these games are usually one score games. Do I have confidence that if we force them to make 250 tackles, that we can get the result? You've got to be confident that you're capable of getting the result. And if you force them to work that hard, you, you would like to think that you can get the result. Has our attack, has our attack improved from that game to now? I, I thought um, if you look at line breaks, we, we make a great line break right at the start of the game and Moriarty doesn't release there's no yellow card for that one. And on the back of that, I think if we get that ball quickly from Simon, I, I think we could score. And that, I can't really say how many times that they fine margins that if you don't get them, it's very hard to, to manufacture them from, from somewhere. I think uh, you know, even toward the end of that game, there's, uh, there's a great chance in the right-hand corner from uh, a great attacking uh, couple of phases of play, 74 minutes gone, 
and, and we're inches away from scoring. When you get that close, I think that you're capable of doing it. It's just, can you do it on the day? I, I certainly hope so. From what you're saying, Joe, it looks as if you're not going to change very much. You don't feel you need to change very much. Well, what, what can you change? It's a game of rugby. Uh, sometimes we kick, sometimes we run wide, sometimes we go through the middle. I think if anyone tried to analyse what we do do, there, there, there is a lot of variety in what we do. And um, I, I think that uh, you know, the, the times that we've not quite managed to get the result against Wales, we've probably uh, had as much of the game as they have and we haven't quite been able to put the game away. But it's, for me, it's, it's another game of rugby where we get the opportunity to try to get as many of those fine margins to fall in our favour. And I, I just know that the players will work as hard as they can to make sure they do. Do we play slightly differently from two years ago? I think anyone who, do, who does analysis will say, yes, we do. There, there are some changes in what we do. And I'm obviously not going to explain them, but that, that's your guys' challenge, I guess. Okay, guys.